Hey, g'day guys, Rod here again, Aquaponic Gardener, Far North Queensland, Australia. Look, in today's video, what I'd like to do is talk about IBC fish tanks. And because of the volume of rain that we have here, I'd like to insert a little overflow so that I don't lose the water during the heavy wet season. It'll go straight into the grow beds. So let's go and let's do some modifications. I've been using these IBC tanks or totes for years. I really love them. They're a great versatile tank and I love the fact that I take them out of the waste stream as well and I'm reusing it so it's a much more sustainable way to uh, do aquaponics but you need to protect them so they last a lot longer and that's that's why I put the insulation there. And due to the heat I've insulated them with underfloor cell insulation. That's a silver paper. It's full of air and it really does protect the tanks. What I do find in the wet season here every single year is that these tanks do overflow. Um, look, IBC tanks are fantastic as a fish tank, but they need to be level. So I've just gone ahead and leveled all these as well, and I'll show you, show you what I did at the back end. But they have to be level, otherwise they do, you know, overflow in a corner, one corner or the other. Now if I just lift the lid here, I'll take that off. All right, so you can, I'll take you over there. Let's have a look. So you can see that there's a big gap there, which is fantastic. There's a good gap. And that's about uh, well, a good three or four inches, I guess. Um, now that gap is, is essential so that it doesn't overflow. But what happens is in the really, really heavy rains, a couple of months worth of rain, then my 12 filter does overflow. The fish pond below overflows and this fish tank as well overflows and it just comes out the lowest point and that is at the front here so that little tiny divot there is the lowest point and it and it'll just flow out of there so what i'd like to do is just put a little bulkhead fitting in just simply insert it into the side and i'll probably do it over in this side here behind this um little bit of facade my bamboo and straight through the the insulation and in that way i'll capture all the water it'll overflow into my grow bed below and also if there's any sort of issue at all if ever my um, uh, solid uh, lifting outlet fills up for whatever reason if it ever gets blocked in the future then also i won't have any overflow problems out the front or the back because it'll overflow through that that outlet and straight into that grow bed there which will end up ultimately in the fish pond so it's a little redundancy that I'm building in it's, it'll be great for the wet season but if that solid lifting outlet overflows also it's a little redundancy to stop that I'm excited let's get cracking so the first thing I need to do is just have a look and where am I going to position it so I'm just going to take a bulkhead fitting such as this one now, this is a 20 millimeter bulkhead fitting it's it's one that I had previously I'm just going to put a, a uh, small screw thread on it and then I'll be able to put a elbow like so and then put a piece of 20 mil pipe straight into the grow bed below. So the first thing is to locate where I'm going to put it and for me in my case I'll just put it here in between the two bars. Uh, you can see these two bars here it's the same all the way around. I'll just have to move a bit of the bamboo and cut a hole and put the bulkhead fitting straight through. I should also mention too that look if you do enjoy my videos and I hope that you do then please if you can help me out and just hit that subscribe button so that you stay in touch and also YouTube will love that and if you hit the like button as well and YouTube will help promote my videos so I can help a lot more other people so I'd really appreciate it if you could do that for me. Thanks. I'll just take the solid lifting outlet out at the moment just so it's not in my way. Never glue these on for such an occasion so that you can move things around. And, and that's what I'm trying to prevent. A little bit of um, algae growing in the bottom. There's no fish in here at the moment, so the algae is growing. If there was fish, it wouldn't be so prolific. And it's not really that bad anyway, but I just want to reduce this because if it does ever block up, which has happened in the past, I'm trying to prevent previous problems here. So once it does block up, say, then it's going to overflow at the lowest point. I don't want that to happen. I want to keep the water in my system. This is one way to fix it. Just going to cut off the cable ties. Holding on the insulation. 
can easily redo it again later. Oh, look at that, a couple of gecko eggs under there. <laughs> Just get rid of those. I really do love geckos, but these little guys are an invasive Asian house gecko. They look really cute, but they are a pest and they outcompete uh, for the same food of our native northern leaf-tailed gecko and other species. They also get into lights and electric switches. You find them everywhere and um, they can short out your house too if you're not careful. And I might have to... I might just have to cut this. Now that I've taken the insulation off, you can see the water level there. So what I'm gonna do is, is put a, a good um, two centimeters above that line based on my rubber that's off the bulkhead fitting here. I'll just use that as a measurement. And I've already checked the water level. You might be able to see it there in the videos, 10 centimeters below the highest point here, or eight centimeters below uh, the lowest point over there. So that's where I get the two centimeters from. So I will now just put it like so, draw a circle, and that is where I'm going to drill. All right, so we've got our hole drilled through there, uh, suitable for the bulkhead fitting. Now, because this is, uh, the whole idea is to keep the water in the tank. So I'm gonna use a little bit of silicon. Uh, you may choose not to, a lot of people don't silicon bulkhead fittings on, but I will in this case because I don't want the water to get out. So I'll just put a little bit of silicon on there. Just a little bit. All right, and then I'll push it through from the inside. Um, now I have already used a round file as well. And, and just file the edge a little bit. All right, if you use a hole saw, that'll clean it up pretty good, but you still have to get those filings off. All right, so I'll just push that through. It's a very tight fit. Might be a bit tricky. And I'll, there we go, I'll pull it through there like so. And then I'll silicon the rubber. It'll be easier. And that way when you do, get, if you do go to remove it later on, it'll, you'll be able to get the bulkhead fitting off because the rubber will be siliconed on. So let's just do that. Like so, a little bit of silicon spilt there. All right, so then it's just a matter of screwing it on. Just screw it on as tight as you can, as quick as you can. You may need tools to do it, but usually finger tight's okay. It's not gonna take too long. It's just a matter of winding her up. Riveting TV, I know. All right, we're nearly there, as fast as I can go. <laughs> and I'll just, yeah, finger tight it on. All right, that's about enough. That's pretty tight. Silicon's just being expelled either side. All right, and then it's just a matter of tidying the silicon up like so. Get a really good seal. And that won't leak. And I'll do the same on the inside. And from there, we put our thread over the top of that. Do it again as tight as you can. And then the last little piece is the 20 mil elbow. Now I'm actually gonna use that elbow as a bit of a tightening method as well. <laughs> Just so I can get a few more turns out of it with the elbow on. So I might as well. Now you can glue that on if you choose to. I'm not going to, so I can get it off easy again later. If it does have a leak though, which I don't think it will, there's not much pressure there, then I would put a bit of glue. Uh, and right now it'll just flow straight into the grow bed below, but I'll just get a little bit of pipe first, make it really neat. So I've cut a small length of pipe. In my case, it was 35 centimeters. And all I'm going to do is insert it in like so. Clear the gravel there. Okay. So it's a simple little operation. So I've just got a bulkhead fitting, 20 mil, and a piece of pipe going straight down into the grow bed below. Now, of course, I've got to tidy up that insulation, which I'll do in a sec. 
but essentially I'm not going to lose any water from the bulkhead fitting. Um, it's siliconed on. If the water level rises, which it will, um, in the wet season, it'll overflow and it'll end up in the grow bed, which will be fantastic. And then it, that, of course, feeds directly into the fish tank below. So I'll just tidy up all the insulation. Alright, so that looks better. And it's just a matter of now cutting the bamboo. In fact, I think the bamboo can fit right over it. So I'm going to spread the bamboo out. I'll take the pipe out. I'll take the elbow off, I think, if I can get it out. Yep. And the bamboo will go over like so. Tidy it up really nicely. And let's see if I can make some modifications. There we go. Put that back on. And voila, so doesn't that look a lot better? And more than look better, it's functional. I'll just cable tie it up to finish it off, but otherwise, much more functional. And if it does um, try and overflow during the wet season next, then I'm ready, and that's the main thing. So I learned from the last wet season, everything overflowed, and you know, occasionally other things block it as well, like that solid lifting pipe. So if that ever happens again, it's not gonna affect me. I'll come down the greenhouse, I'll be happy. The, the fish pond sump won't drop because all the water will still keep coming out. Look, all I've done is purchase this bamboo um, from the local hardware store. It comes in big packets. There's all different varieties on the shelf. And I think it looks really, really nice aesthetically. It just means that my silver insulated tanks don't look like a science experiment because I did look a little bit sciencey before. Um, but it makes it look pretty neat, I think. What do you think? Look, it won't do anything for the fish whatsoever, but it sure makes me happy. And if it makes me happy, I'll make the fish happy. I did say that I'd show you how I jacked up the system and everything. So I have packed it out. You can see I've got bricks underneath. If you look through that bamboo blind, you can see that I do have bricks. Now over time, those bricks have sunk down into the earth. So I've now put in just a couple of little pieces of fibro just four millimeters thick and that's enough to level the entire system up above so that also should help because now i've got no low points and the entire system now will be level so now it's just just going to work like a charm i hope so at the end of the day that outlet over on that side the smallest little dip is no longer where the water's going to flow so it's just going to flow at the lowest point, which is now our little 20 mil pipe, which is wonderful news. It will save water and it will save my sanity because it has overflowed a few times in the past. I mean, it's not perfect. You can see the insulation still through it, but it does um, look pretty good to me. Now, look, I may need a couple of layers. Two layers would be better actually, but it looks pretty good. Well, I couldn't just do those couple of tanks. I had to do this one as well. And now it's got a bit of a tropical feel. I think the fish like it too, actually, secretly. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you're interested in some more maintenance type aquaponics videos, then check this one out right here next, because uh, I'm doing a series at the moment. I'm sure it's going to help you. There's a ton of information there and content. If you want any more information, then check out the description. I'll leave some more info in there as well. Until next time, happy aquaponics. Check that out.